Don't let them fall. Thank you very much. Now, a lot of people are here, very, very high profile individuals, as you can see, and we will not have the privilege of starting without recognizing each and every place. There is a tendency for you to be recognized. And to do, the, to, to do that, I will have the privilege of welcoming Mr. President. Mr. President, the President of the Transition of Online Security News Publishers. Otherwise known as Nasby. Can we all give it up as we welcome Comrade Samson Oki? Please come forward. Please give me a hand up for Comrade Samson. Samson Oki for his address and then we'll come to the first. Mr. Samson Oki. Mr. Samson Oki. 
Today you know your wife. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 So all this, so for us as media practitioners, that is the essence 
the gathering to this um, this morning is for media person. I'm sure the majority of this will be a media person. So uh, the the essence is for us to come together, this matter of where you where you work, media houses is not uh, it's just the fact that we're using the platform of NASPI to organize this. But this is for media practitioners and to shape our, our, our uh, to give us better understanding um, about our job, the rudiments of our job, the ethics and all that. And that's why we have uh, experts from the media uh, set so these are persons that are being the monitoring and deal us. But really this one is one to to us and not going to uh, too much big like this. Uh, but really this is uh, I believe it's our, our officers here and the, the various speakers I believe it's going to be a very engaging uh, time for our international. So much to learn and uh, there's also been room for questions and all that. So really, let's open up our mind and let's then you know, get better. You know, so um, I will need to do the mic here. So once again, the welcome starts and now to Group Commander Olabisi Shonusi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We also have in our midst this morning our own veteran journalist. He has uh, is a man that wears so many, in fact, he has so many titles and so many uh, profiles to himself. If, but I'm, I'm sure I, I, I might not be able to do all this uh, with this one. He's one of a journalist, uh, senior journalist, uh, senior colleague that uh, I envy by his uh, uh, credentials and uh, uh, CV and all that. So, but uh, let me just do a little uh, in just uh, putting him. By he is the uh, immediate, uh, I think, did I say yeah, immediate, immediate uh, news director from Lagos State um, LTV8, and he's also the, I think, the pioneer um, uh, TV host for uh, this popular program there, was a big uh, uh, program on TV, on TVC. That's big issue. Yeah. Am I right? Big issue, yes, on TVC then, and now he's also a, a, a very senior. You know, um, um, uh, News person at the Arise TV, the Arise TV, Arise News TV, and he's also the founder of Journalism NG. And he's no other person than Mr. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one, one thing I will see is because it's a bit of a background, so uh, but we just have to continue the situation. We also have in our mind this morning, I believe uh, other guests have become a little bit of a situation. We also have in our mind uh, this morning is. Uh, that's what we have to do. We don't do celebrate our time. You clap for yourself. Can you appreciate your performance? You are well recognized. Okay. Okay, so, Doctor, so thank you. Uh, I think we can just bring this game on. We're not speaking, so we can just bring it on. This morning, like I mentioned, the AIG has been presented this morning. By SP Bakare Ibrahim, and we're going to do uh, We're going to have a preparation of events officially to the open officially. So I would like uh, to, in this honor, to invite the Bakare. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. 
as well. So please, we are rewarding the day. Nobody should be named. It is by jealous, we are rewarding the other Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Thompson, thank you so very much. Yeah, I love this person. He knows how to, you know, <laughs> anything we write on. Yeah, uh, representative of the IG and um, other um, security agencies and representative of the identity monitors. Thank you for doing all this honor by increasing this event. And now to my uh, colleagues in the room, I want to say good morning to you. You know, we only have gentlemen of the press. We don't have gentle women of the press. And that's because it's um, a profession for the bold, you know, for the strong attacks. So I agree to good morning. Can we celebrate ourselves more once again? But, uh, I was listening to the MC earlier and um, he was trying to you know, make us to um, open up more and celebrate ourselves more. But um, it was a very difficult job for him. I don't know why Africans are just um, that to it. So cloud doesn't cost a thing, does it? <laughs> it doesn't. Yes, I must appreciate um, the organizers of this workshop, that's um, the National Zone of Online Security and Risk Publishers, and particularly the president who was doing my leg uh, for some days now. And he said, I must leave whatever I'm doing, and I just have to be here this morning. And um, I want to appreciate you guys. Uh, you are doing a great job, you are doing a wonderful job. And uh, I want to tell you that uh, the rest of us in the profession, we are also very proud of you. And the nation in Judah is also part of it. Can you celebrate yourself again? Yes, this morning my assignment is not a difficult one. It's something that um, uh, you and I do regularly. So I'm going to be delivering a talk that may not be entirely new to you. You know, some of us, some part of it may be new to us, but um, it's, um, it's a learning process altogether whether it's new to you or not new to you. Because our job is a time that uh, you have to keep on training and training yourself from time to time. So I'll make this as simple as possible, and uh, if possible, I'll also make it a very interesting uh, for us to engage with one another in this session. So we're talking about the arts and business of journalism. The arts and business of journalism. To a lot of us, we find it difficult to draw a line between the two. And uh, even many of us really don't know that journalism is not just an art, it's also a business. And it is not just a business, it is also an art. And the two of them come together um, to uh, be what we call um, journalism as we practice it today. I know most of us in this room um, this morning, we I run our own news platform. Thank God for uh, the introduction of the internet. It has uh, really uh, simplified the process of journalism in Nigeria. Before now, there was a particular genre of journalism that they call citizen journalism. But uh, with the coming of uh, the internet, that genre of journalism seems uh, to be fading away because everybody now is a journalist. <laughs> if you understand what I mean. Um, some of us have uh, good training, and some of us really do not have that training. We don't have that opportunity of having any formal training before uh, we embark on what we do. There's nothing bad in it. There's nothing bad in it. Whatever category of people um, between these two that I mentioned that you fall to, there's nothing bad in it. Let, let me shock you that um, uh, the father of journalism in Nigeria himself never went to any journalism school. And that's talking about you know, from the he never went to any journalism school and he learned the job, you know, he learned the art while on the job. And today we can celebrate it, you understand? And um, a number of other veterans that have come, that have gone, they never really attended any formal journalism school. But they made their impact, they made their, um, you know, they, 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 they make a mark in the profession and today we are talking about. So put your mind at rest. And um, let's enjoy this session together. Uh, perhaps at the end of this session, you will um, 
we have to pick one or two um, new things. Let, let's look at the art of journalism. I said you are looking at journalism as both an art and, of course, a business. The art of it is what a lot of us engage in. Although some of us really understand the art, but um, a whole lot of us have not really mastered that art of journalism. And when I talk about art, I'm talking about the practice of journalism for the sake of journalism. That's the practice of journalism for the sake of journalism. And what is the sake of journalism? It is to inform. It is, let's make it interactive. It is to do what again? To educate. To educate, thank you. To what again? To entertain. To what again? For fun, that's entertainment. To what again? To inform. To inform. Okay, what again? There is one that all of us have missed. And we don't. No, no, that's, that's the business part of it. That business part the best part. You must be for the I love you, Jehovah people. Jehovah people, I greet you. That's a problem. The a particular part of it that we always skip. All of us have mentioned what uh, the sake of journalism is all about to inform, to educate, to entertain. But we have always, we are always forgetting that journalism is also to set agenda. To set agenda. And this is a very important part of today's journalism. To set agenda. It is not just to inform, to educate, or to entertain. Our, our readers, our viewers, our listeners can get all of these things through other means. They can get informed through other means. We know how we do it. News is not a copyright of anybody. Once the news breaks out there, even before you break it, people you want to break it to, they already have that information. So they get this information in every other place. Entertainment is everywhere. Education is also everywhere around us. I'm not, you know, bringing this down. I'm not I'm trying to make them light. I'm just trying to tell you that these things are ubiquitous. That is, they are everywhere all around us. But agenda setting responsibility of the media has been defeated over the years, especially in Nigeria. And that is why our society is the way it is right now. It is our responsibility to set agenda for people in position of authority, for these gentlemen that are sitting here, for people in government, for people out there. Our job is not just to tell them, you know, the five W's and H. Our job is not just to say, according to, he said, in his words, and so on and so forth. We know how we do that, you know? Our job is not just to copy news materials and reward them and publish them on our platforms. A more important part of our responsibility is to set agenda. And that is a part of the art that we really need to do more. How do we set agenda? How do we set agenda? Uh, we set agenda based on all those points that we all agree together. Information, education, uh, what again? Entertainment. Entertainment and the rest of them. We use those elements also to set agenda. I launched a newspaper recently, and um, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be telling you a lot, a little about myself as we continue in this discussion. Uh, I, I am a cross-platform journalist. That means I have, um, I have experience on all the platforms of journalism that you can think of. I've been on TV, I've been on radio, I've been in newspaper journalists, I have online platforms that I run, and so on and so forth. So I launched a newspaper recently as one of our newspapers. And the newspaper is called Oloshebu. I don't know if anybody has come across that paper. Oloshebu. The way we Oloshebu. Oloshebu in Yoruba means the politician, right? Good. Now, the idea behind that newspaper is to help the man on the streets. That man that does not speak the Queen's English. 
that man that cannot read English, that man that can read English but cannot understand English. We are in an election period and there is need to constantly set agenda, not just for the people in government, even for people who are outside the government, the citizenry, the tailor down the street, the mechanic down the street, the plumber over there. So all of these people will realize over time that they are not properly informed, properly shaped when it comes to political matters. And that is why they are easily swayed here and there by all manners of lies by the politicians. So what we have done there is to look at those big, big things that are difficult for people to understand and then break them down into, um, uh, how would I put it now, into little elements that they can easily digest. For an instance, we are talking about uh, the amended electoral act. I can beat my chest that even people who are, who are learned, who have gone to school up to master's level, they find it difficult to understand that law. True or true? It's true. Incidentally, my spirit, my judgment tells me that we have some people in this hall that don't have a grasp of that particular law. And that law will go a long way in determining who gets what for the next four, eight years in our nation life. And at the end of the day, it will affect you and I. We made the decision in 2015, we repeated that decision in 2019, and many of us are regretting that decision. And that's the truth. Except you want to deceive yourself. Are we going to go the same road again? Are we going to repeat that thing again? For us to escape that, the responsibility lies on the shoulders of journalists. And that was why we came back to that newspaper. I just use that as an example. We have other platforms around that are also doing that job. It's not just to report what has happened, but to give perspectives to what has happened and to analyze them and, you know, let people see the implication of what has happened. Now, yesterday, the National Assembly uh, is already trying to uh, make adjustment to that same law. What impact will that have on the election that is coming? Now, many of us have reported that particular uh, news item. The National Assembly, 11 hour rush to amend the Electoral Act. Good, that's the news. All of us have the news. But what is the impact of that news on our forthcoming election? How will it impact the man on the street? What are the politicians trying to achieve by trying to, you know, make this amendment while it's just a couple of days to their primary elections? Have we sat down to ask ourselves these questions? And these are examples of how we can set agenda as journalists. I, I don't know if, I don't know if, uh, uh, Okay, well, that, don't worry. We'll, 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 we'll try to keep to time. But I would, I would have really love to talk about this art of journalism more than this. Agenda setting is just one of them. Let, let, let me quickly touch on uh, this new type of journalism they call solutions journalism. I don't know if some of us have really come across that. Solutions journalism is an element of agenda setting role of the journalists. Solutions, it's called solutions. Solutions journalism is an element of the agenda setting role of the media. And what is solutions journalism? Solutions journalism, in a layman explanation, is to look at problems, identify problems. Identify problems, investigate the problems, and based on expert suggestions or based on what has worked elsewhere, you are not just reporting the problem and looking at the problem, but you are also referring 
some solutions to the problem. And that is what Solutions Humanity set out to achieve. I was coming this morning on the third Milan Bridge, and um, I was the only one in my car. I, I, I started hearing siren from my back, and I saw um, some little men in the pickup um, in the pickup vehicle. Some of them were, you know, building kuboko and all sorts of things, trying to forcefully create way for people that they are living. Because I can see some exotic cars, a convoy of exotic cars coming behind that particular truck. There was traffic. Everybody um, was in that traffic. But they wanted to make a way for themselves. Maybe by the exigency or the duty at hand that they want to go and execute. They, they only can explain that. Now, not far away from there, an ambulance was also coming. The ambulance was also blaring a siren. But I discovered that our people would rather make way for the uniformed men than make way for the ambulance. But in other times, it doesn't work that way. You can Google it online, you can check Germany for an instance. They have a dedicated route that no man there passes. And that dedicated route is for emergencies, like ambulances, like maybe security people wanting to go and attend to an emergency, and so on and so forth. Now, I have identified a problem, and something tells me that I must do a story in that regard. To show you an example of the way it is working in Germany, and tell you that it is possible for us also to have a similar environment, and by so doing, we end up saving lives and bringing sanity to our own. That is what Solutions Humanity set out to achieve. I don't want to believe us too much about this agenda um, setting role of the media, but I want to tell you that it's one of the most important role of the media you know, of journalism as an art. It's not just to report events as they are, but also to set agenda for all the stakeholders in society. The led and those who are leading them, the teachers and those who are they are teaching. Um, the structure of our writings these days, um, it leaves a lot um, to be desired. Especially when you look at some online platforms. Like I said earlier, there's nothing wrong in falling in love with journalism, even without any formal, you know, journalism training to run it. You can learn on the job. I said it earlier. But it is not a thing that should be forgiven. That after you have created your platform, after you are practicing this thing, you have refused to learn the art. I've seen instances where two, three, four um, online platforms will do the same story word for word. I don't know if anybody has also you know, taken note of that development. In the past, before this ubiquity of uh, the internet everywhere in Nigeria, maybe on some rare occasions you find two, three newspapers using the same pictures on the front page, the syndicate pictures. Some of the pictures are paid for, they are syndicated. But you actually find two newspapers reporting the same event, the same way, not to talk of using word, word for word. But these days, what do we have? We have watered down the art of journalism in such a way that we have become so lazy that all we do is control A, Ctrl C and Ctrl V. That's copy and paste journalism. One of our other will call it journalism. Ch journalism. C H U R N A L I S M. They are just churning out materials without any impact. Your job is just to populate your, your website. Your job is just to drive traffic to your website. Your job is just to ensure that you don't miss out on an item that other people are carrying. Well, that is not your responsibility. That is not why you are in this art. You are in this art to create an impact. There is nothing wrong in, you know, having a lead. All, all of us cannot cover all assignments at the same time. Some of us don't even have the financial strength or the human capacity 
um, you know, to do that. Some of us are just one man million houses. Am I right? And I have done it before. One man million house. You are the editor, you are the reporter, you are the graphics editor, you are the this, you are the that, you are the that. There's nothing wrong in that. But we need to up our game and go a step higher than that. There's nothing wrong in, you know, see the story on, on Punch this paper for an instance. I see that this story will also interest my readers. There's nothing wrong in taking the story, reworking the story in such a way that it appears like the original story. Reworking the story and then, you know, maybe making some phone calls and adding your own perspectives to it. Why, would, why do I have to come to your platform to read the story that I read on the Punch newspaper? Why do I have to come there? If you like, share the same link over and over on my WhatsApp, I will not click. And the reason why we are where we are today as journalists is because we are born, we are born so lazy about the art of, um, of, of the practice. What about our writing style? Some of us have original stories that we publish. But how do we write? How do we present them? How do we write? How do we present them? Now, writing for, I, I, I am one of the privileged few to have worked across all platforms. And it's, it's a privilege. It's a privilege, really. It's not by uh, anybody's mind. But I can tell you authoritatively that the way you write for TV is not the way you write for newspaper. The way you write for newspaper is not the way you write for the radio. The way you write on the radio is not the way you write online. I know many of us have not realized that. We write exactly the way we write for the print version of newspaper on our e version of the newspaper. No, it is not that way. And you know the reason why that is so? Because the attention span of humans gets, is getting reduced by the day. The attention span, the attention span, as we are sitting here, look at that man now. Something else is taking his attention. It's not his fault. That is the age where we are living. We have a lot of things that are competing for attention, that are competing for the attention of the readers. And so you cannot go online and still create order for that reader. So that is why the writing style, I don't know if uh, uh, the president and the executive, uh, maybe sometimes in the future, uh, will consider having a session on how to write for the internet. It's something that all of us have missed. Because the internet has its own writing pattern. Entirely different from the way you write for newspapers and, and the rest of them. I read some, some, some well-designed websites, good content, good materials, but the writing style is terrible. You see a block of paragraph is long from here to here, just one paragraph. No, it's acceptable in hard copy newspaper, but online it is not. And that is why, I don't know, um, if, who, who, who uses uh, um, Yoast SEO here? Yoast SEO, their website. You use it. You use it. Which, okay, let, 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 let me just, let, let's do this. Let, let me know the SEO plugin that you use on your website, because I know that the uh, majority of us, we are WordPress. Just SEO, only one. Okay, and uh, only one SEO, I know that. Which other SEO plugin do we have? What, what do you call it? Rank. Rank math. Okay, I'm hearing that for the first time. Thank you for that question. Which other SEO plugin do you use? How many of us have this website yet? How many of us have this website yet? I thought the association is the online security institution. <laughs> I might talk to your own audience. How many of us write for news websites here? Even if you don't know, have, how many of us write for news websites here? Okay. Are you conversant with search engine optimization? Sure. Okay. So, my, my language should not be strange to you when I'm talking about the writing style 
for online platforms. Because you want to generate traffic, you want to rank high, but your SEO score is nowhere you know, to be reckoned with. And why is, is this so? Because of the pattern of writing, because of the style of writing that you have adopted from the platform. We need to um, go back to the drawing table and learn this art of writing copies for online platforms. Some of us write copies for online platforms and it's as long as long by dictionary. How many people get to reach it to the end? By the time the person reads the first and the second paragraph, you already lost the person. True or true? true. Because other things are seeking for his attention. The WhatsApp is posing there. You want to check his Facebook. You want to watch uh, uh, Facebook Live. You want to do this. You want to do that. And on this website, it's not the only website that he has access to. So why would I see that? to a news website and read that long piece of material. Most of the time, it's just a wasted effort. It's just effort in utility. We may not know, because we're enjoying it, we're just putting it down there. Do we conduct any survey among our readers to find out what they want, to find out what they read? How many of us use this? How many of us use a jetpack? Jetpack on our website. How many of us know about Jetpack? Know about Jetpack? Know about Jetpack? How many of us know about Jetpack? Okay. If you are a website owner and you are not using Jetpack, you are living in 1986. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just do that. You have to use Jetpack. Jetpack will make your job so so easy. It's available for WordPress website. I don't know if the president and the deputy will also consider a web development session. Because as young as we also need to have an idea of web development to really help us in pushing up our materials. Now, Jetpack tells you what articles your readers are reading most. What time is the best time? What time you get more traffic for your website, for your website? And it gives you these statistics on daily basis, minute by minute. And locations, God bless you. It was a surprise when we launched that Yoruba newspaper I mentioned earlier. That I realized that more people are reading the newspaper in the United States of America than any other African country apart from Nigeria. Are you shocked? More people read the Yoruba newspaper in the US than more, most African countries. Jetpack will tell you. Ordinarily, you may not be able to know that, but Jet pack, you'll be able to ascertain that. So, you now take those statistics provided by Jetpack, and incidentally, Jetpack it has a free version and paid version. But the free version will do all of these things that I'm talking about. So, with Jetpack, you now get all your details, scoop those statistics, work them out, and use them in determining what you push out, how you push them out and when you push them out. What you push out, how you push them out, and when you push them out. In one of our websites, Daily News, we realized that people read us more at evening time. They read us more anytime from 5 p.m. downward. And we have, you know, want our content to align with that suggestion. It's not our fault, but that's our culture as Africans. We don't investigate, we don't do research. Even conventional media organizations, TV houses, radio houses, big media organizations, most of them don't do regular survey to know what their audience wants and how to give it to them. But we, as online publishers, we need to take advantage of technology in achieving that. I, I, I really want to, I want us to switch to the business of our um, journalism because we have been talking about art, art. We have quite a lot to talk about the art of journalism that um, um, this session you know, may not be able to contain. Um, th there are free courses online for whoever is interested as journalists. Chibu said that a journalist is someone 
who has an idea about, who knows everything about a thing, and knows a thing about everything. That's how Chief of Me Allah defined the journalist. He said, he's someone that knows everything about a thing, but a thing about everything. So, we need to be constantly trained and retrained. There are few resources online. I run a website for um, the media industry in Nigeria, it's journalism.ng. Journalism.ng. There, we do free online trainings. We give our resources. When we, when we come across books, e-books that are beneficial to um, Nigerian journalists, we put them there for you to download and read. There are materials to use, but we are not taking advantage of those materials. So let's talk about the business of journalism. Now, after doing all of these things, of course, setting agenda and causing a change for the better in the society is a thing that can give us satisfaction. But if you are setting agenda, if you are setting agenda, you are causing a change. You are causing a change. It will attract what you need, really. But if you are not making money, you are not running the business, you will soon run out of agenda to set up. And that's the truth. To some of us, we are attracted to online journalism because we want to make some extra, you know, passive income through or through. We want to see if we can make some passive, you know, income from it. And some of us are not doing that. Especially with Google AdSense and all sorts of uh, affiliate programs. Before now, there was no uh, serious affiliate programs in Nigeria. But now we have a number of affiliate programs in Nigeria. And even if your website is unable to get um, Google Access approval, you have other affiliate programs that you can tap to. I'm not sure if you understand what I'm talking about. Do we? You understand? How many of us understand what I'm talking about? Affiliate programs. Google AdSense is a service created by Google. Google is one of the largest internet companies in the world. It's not the largest. Google AdSense is one of the several services provided by Google. And what they do is to create a meeting point between the advertisers and the content owners. Now, the advertisers approach Google. Google, I want to sell this phone. This phone is available. What do I do? Google now approach, it approaches content providers and put that advert on your platform. You see some automatically generated adverts on websites. Most of them are Google AdSense. They are Google AdSense adverts. They are automatically generated. The system will look at what Google has in store and pick relevant adverts to what you are doing or your location or the location of people who are looking at your particular ads. So, whatever Google makes from that advert from the advertiser, a chunk of it goes to you as the platform owner. Do you understand it now? Do you understand it now? And that's where most news, uh, online news publishers make their money. They rely heavily on Google Access. But there's a snag there. It's not always easy to get Google Access approval. You can run the website. I have a website I've to today. We don't have Google Access on it. We keep applying and it's been rejected for reasons known best to them. Google determines if they are going to give you an access account or not. It's a process. Now, if you are unable to get that, years before now, if you are unable to get Google AdSense, it's as good as you are told. You may not be able to make, you know, um, any income from the website. But these days, you have indigenous affiliate programs. Google AdSense is an affiliate program. You have similar affiliate programs that are similar to what Google runs. For an instance, Bet Niger has an affiliate program. Go, go to affiliate.betnager.com. 
can sign up for their affiliate program, copy the link, put it on your website. It generates adverts automatically for you. And so, whenever anybody clicks through adverts, through that adverts, and the advertisers, you know, the advertisers are able to pay some money from it, the affiliate owner automatically drives, go online, go on Google, type Nigerian affiliate programs, and it will bring a lot of them. There's a furniture company that has a program for sales. They are not just news articles. They are not just information for information. You, if you check Vanguard, you check the Sun, you check the Nation, even I, I can't really place it my own. I'm saying when you check most of these mainstream newspaper websites, you read the story, and you get to the point. They read also how a 41-year-old housewife was able to solve her husband's uh, problem. You put the link there. You continue to read the story. You get to the point. Say, how I succeeded in fighting my plan. You put the link there. Those are advertorial links. If you click there, it will take you to a page where you read the story. But as you are reading the story, they are selling you a product. I run a website, it's called NG Apps. NG, NG from Nigeria, apps.com. What we do there is to sell our products. We sell our products, local and important. We sell our products, we sell our products. We have done several of those articles that I have I just mentioned. When you are reading the article, when you get to the point and you ask to read more, whatever, you click this link. If you click, you are coming to my website. You are coming to a landing page of my website. So the landing page we have enticing you know, things that are so so you know, interesting to you, but difficult for you to read. So I have paid www.newtoday.com to put just this as an to put my advertorial link there. So there's a system that tells me how many uh, redirects, they call it redirects, I got from that www.today.com to my website. So whatever sales I make, that, there are there are several ways they, they, they pay the, the platform owners. There's one called CCP or C. Click Papi. Yeah, CPC. Click Papi. PPC. Pay per click. Pay per click. We have an agreement that if I'm able to get 200 clicks, this is what I pay you. And there are others that just rely on. If I'm able to make the sale, you get social percentage out of it. So it's one way that website owners, news website owners, can also generate revenue. I really do not spend too much of your time. Sometimes there's an end of thing. Okay. So it's, it's one way that uh, you know the business of, uh, of journalism can be enhanced. Another one that you can do on your own, you know you can place an advert on your own on your website too. I think everybody should know that. And you are the of on the template of a work preservation that will determine how you place that on the website. But you can also do events. I will notice or I will observe that almost all major newspapers in Nigeria today have one of the year award. The usual cash and carry award. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. That you will find wrong politicians in the same position they are telling me is engaged in the like that and they are telling me is the governor of the year. All of us are magicians when it comes to putting five minutes in the mouth right? and it's a case. You know, then you can do it, sir. You can, you can make five minutes to, to disappear from your mouth. Have you? <laughs> so we, we, we know the secret behind it. But we can do events that may not necessarily solve the image of our news platform. There are events you can do that you can leverage on the traffic or the followership 
that your platform has been able to generate over, over, over the months or over the years to organize maybe an annual event. You don't have to make it national. The locality where you operate, you can present them. You don't have to do a word. You are the cheapest that comes to do this money. And that's the easiest that comes to their money. You don't have to do a word. You can do events that align with the mission statement of your news website. For well, instance, you are running a, news, a, a sports news website and you are, you are, you are running a award for politicians in your, in your community. And others, they don't, they don't, they don't turn it. They don't turn it. Okay. I think I have to drop, drop the anchor here. Yes. <laughs> but in closing, in closing, I want to tell us that uh, we should not lose sight of the business of journalism by focusing too much on the art. And we should not lose sight of the art of journalism by focusing too much on the business. We need to run them side by side so that we'll be able to sustain the platform over time. Thank you so very much. Thank you, listeners. One more time, put our hands together for our wonderful speaker, Mr. Fabio. He mentioned about the applause. I think we should give a better applause to the second. I want to say, first, that I believe the two of us should have probably allowed him to go more by the business aspect, but of course, um, for sake of time. Okay, let me invite Mr. Sagarisa. Thank you, the last speaker. For the sake of time, we'll just move ahead. Somebody say please hello. Uh, thank you. Now, we're not going to the next speaker. The next speaker... The next speaker from the... From the man in khaki. From the man in green. From the man who, whenever you see them, you have to think again. In fact, you don't do anything on control in their presence. And so, I'm going to invite the, the representative of the Nigerian Army staying in this auditorium right now. Please just give it up for Major A. K. Bello as he steps forward. <laughs>
two people sleep in a room, definitely you can't expect them to put their heads in the same way. Some might put his own maybe by the left, while the other one might put it by the right. Yeah, that is good. Um, talking about the media, it's all about celebration. When I talk about celebration, like the press speaker said, that entertainment, yeah. Most of our media in Nigeria, media, I mean, journalists, traditional in Nigeria, it's more or less like we are mostly in the negative aspects. Why I'm here today is because of Mr. Samson Oki, because I've tested him several occasions when it comes to professionalism. Met or we've known ourselves for long, but we should be more proactive as in the positive aspect of humanity. Let's stop thinking about the negative aspect, most especially when it has to do with our country. Journalism is all about a family. You have three children. I can't expect the three children to, the three children to, to, to have the same thing. And there's always a position at which the parents take when it comes to about their labor right in the family. But in our own sector, as a journalist, we pick the area at which we think, yes, going to be of our own favor, which is not supposed to be. And we should always be cautious of what we do at every point in time. I remember yesterday, we are coming from a particular place for a courtesy visit with my boss, and we saw some soldiers along the line. We came down, they were putting on camera. We stopped and we came down. I asked them, who are you? They are from different sister agencies. How many journalists know about this? If you want to say, you say army. There is no army. Air Force, Navy, Army, we wear both same uniform. But before you know what is happening, they say army, beat this army in guys. There's more into investigative journalism. Let us go deep into the root, or to the root of the, any matter we have been um, probably we want to pump it into the um, to the head. It's very, very important. Because that's one of the things that is creating problems for us in this country. Ask more. Go deep before you rise. Like I said, like the first speaker. When he came out, I said, let me come outside, let me stop him. In fact, the whole world will hear about it. But when I come out and let me come to nobody will talk about that. Why? And on no account, anybody can ever say anything against his family. Why? I use family is because Nigeria is our home. I've been to many African countries. When you get to some African countries, I'm telling you, thank God, you say, the God be the glory of from Nigeria. Why do we keep the image of this country? The image is very, very important. Very, very important. Because the way you portray your image is the way others will have you. That's why you said, you see most people, they say, where they travel, they say, Nigeria this way, other countries this way. Why? It's because one or one, what you have done to your country is what is the way they treat them outside. So please, most of the practitioner, we have to be very, very um, professional, proactive, and go into details. Like some few days ago, and uh, my car. I wanted to calm down. 
came to my mind that I was in uniform. Yes, we have professionals and we have unprofessionals. The professional journalists, journalists are even more than the professional ones. I mean, the unprofessional are more than the professional because almost every all Nigerians now are professional. <laughs> yes. You know, I have to, you know, when they say someone pinch you, you just have to use your hand to rub his off. That's what I did because immediately I come down, I know there's something going to be, something is going to happen. Most especially if it's asked to do for me to use marks, I will use it. I'm going out. Because people can do in my face, which I don't want to. So please, um, I try to encourage um, ourselves to be proactive and to go into details at any point in time, whatever we do. I will still indulge the president because this a day workshop is not enough. When you talk about media, it's very, very wide. I got to know about this program yet on Monday, I guess, today is Wednesday, yeah, this is one yesterday, which I was able to prepare some PowerPoint but so Unfortunately, I, when I got there, I found out that it's not something that you have to use PowerPoint because it will take a lot of time. And I believe most of us that are here, we have a lot of experience, a lot of experience that we need to share within ourselves. So journalism goes very, very far, very fast than what we think uh, we are into. Yeah, the first speaker has a lot to give us, but unfortunately the time is almost not enough for him to do that, which uh, at every point in time, anywhere you get to make sure that you learn one or two things. Like myself, they say if you don't blow your trumpet, nobody will blow it for you. That's all about journalism. The way the road safety representative, the way she's sitting down, I get something from it. The same thing with the representatives of the AIG, and uh, my dear brother, if you might say, he's a pastor. I don't know why I want to be in uniform. Maybe that is his ministry. So please, at every point in time, like I said earlier, we should make sure that uh, we go into details in anything we are going to ask. The journalist, you must make sure that you preach the true gospel about a particular instance so that what you are doing will justify the end. On that note, thank you very much and all the best. A capacity I've been in for close to 12 years. And at a point, even some of my colleagues were like, how about you know who transfer? And you don't change actually a winning team sort of. And especially when you're in Lagos and you have that good relationship with the press. I must commend them for having been at my back, back to back for the number of years. I know sometimes I wonder why they have always been supportive and they have always been there over the years. For us at FRSC, one of our mandates says that we are to eradicate road traffic crash and create a safe motoring environment. And that cannot be done if some of our activities are not always in the public domain. What I do like my own sector is to educate and enlighten the motoring public. And the platform for disseminating some of the policies, some of the uh, rules and regulations that the motoring public needs to keep is through some of the forms that we have, which are the radio, the TVs, even the online. I must commend the social media platforms now that have been making even our job more easier. So, um, I must commend those that have been there for us over the years, who have helped us when we have those releases and they are helping us to actually get it to the public. So I want to say a big thank you once again on behalf of the sector commander and also some of my colleagues who are in the public education uh, sector. One of the issues that I have had over the years with um, the media had always been us not really verifying issues before sometimes going to publish them, whether online or creating a news out of the posting 
force, let me use the word force sometimes, because you've seen it from the angle where someone had said something, but you have that PRO's number for you to just verify that part before going to publish. So I feel that is one of the areas that, moving away from here, I want us to please stick to. If there's anything about FRSC, our men, I've always used this word, that even out of the 12 um, disciples of Jesus, we have, the Jew, we have Judas. So most of our men there, nobody sent them to be unruly. Nobody said they should go out of the exits of the job. But you sometimes find some of them doing that. So when you meet with such, please, rather than you publishing it, please can you talk to us, either myself or the sector commander. And I know for the sector commanders, their numbers are the only in the public domain. So please let us always do verifying the issues before they go out there. And just as I said, I commend us for what we have done. I must commend um, the National Association of Online Security News Publishers. Even when they came for the court visit, they debate the sector commander. I was not there. If we took it and the course, I was not at the office. I was under the weather at that time. But I contacted him and that relationship kept going over that. Since then, I even had to introduce another colleague who was in immigration to them, and they've actually been doing the best for us, always getting our news right there. I want us to take something out of here as we're going. I said FRSC is out there to create a safe motoring environment, but how do we actually use the road? Always know that some of the crashes that we witness right there on the road is always caused by somebody because I'm also using this platform to inform, just like Mr. Oba said, and to educate. Please, any anytime you're on the road, if you are out there, don't let that mistake come from you. Always know that you are sharing the road with every other person that are potential dangers to you. The only same person at every point in time on the road is you. So I want to once again commend the organizers of this forum and always pray that I'm looking forward to another edition. And by God's grace, if Oba had not gone on transfer, I sure will be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, great, precise, straight to the point. Please, one more time, please put your hands on the Thank you so much for being just Okay, without more ado, we invite. Okay, okay. okay. it's a long time. Please put your hands together for me. The AIG.
an experiential program. And the team is centered upon security reporting. That is, what are the things that are not supposed to be involved? What are the things that are supposed to be helped? What are the things that are supposed to be corrected? What are some of the things that are supposed to be found out or investigated? Every body, every part of security of a nation makes up what forms the national security architecture. Of the nation. And that implies that the armed forces that we know, that is the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Navy, and the Nigerian Air Force, are also part and parcel of this big basket called national security architecture. Wherein you now have the Nigerian police force, you now have other security agencies. In the internal security, such as Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Nigeria Customs Service, Federal Road Service, the Federal Fire Service, and others that you know, before you now begin to come to the lower strata at the state level. And today, the new story is on community policing. I will say that. First, you must appreciate the fact that wearing this uniform does not think of our own informers, either local or international. That we chose to wear this uniform do, do not, does not make us dummies. Some of us wearing this uniform are master's holders, PhD holders, professors. You can be any weakness when you go to our colleges and some of our training schools and some that are on the operational line. Now, the reason I have to say this emphatically is because we have only chosen to serve Nigeria, just the same way you are serving Nigeria, but on another pedestrian. We have chosen to face the rot for Nigeria. We have chosen to be the one that will be single-handedly picked to be fired in case any kind of analysis of what will happen there. We have chosen to face it the way it is, in the bid to defend others who are also our brothers and sisters. Without dismay, without looking at you to be lesser than us because we get uniform or what have you. In return, what do we get back? How do you report us? What are the things that come up into your mind when you want to report security? I think some of these things form the basis, you know, why Major A.K. Bello would want to go or toe the line he told when he was speaking. However, I try to subject it more academically. Bell is a speech. Observation is the first law of science. When the president was speaking, I mean Mr. Samson Eki, why he was trying to talk about um, when the one was trying to introduce me, he made a serious point and he said, it is a pleasure to note that um, the Nigerian Spirit and Civil Defense Corps is in us proud in Lagos and through the Bihar Road. For me, this is not a flutter. For me, the same person he was talking about has the privilege to stand here for a few minutes I was now. And I have the singular honor to tell you that he was correct in what he was saying. And why is he correct? Is an interactive section. I came on board as PRO within the last one year, three months. Before I became PRO, what is called PRO before I came, for me, I was hungry because of my background and the exposure I have gotten. But if it is not your turn, it is not your time, it is not your turn, it is not your time. You have to wait. And when I came in, I discovered that proactivity is what the people need for most, and not reactivity. We need to be proactive 
rather than being reactive. And if we are proactive, these media people will have no more reason to report us in bad mind. They will have no reason to report us anymore in bad mind. And to be proactive, to be proactive rather, is not live service. Like the Bible says, the kingdom of God is not in rest, but is in power. It is not lip service, it is you sacrificing all that you have got in the service, all that you have got elsewhere to do the job. Many of us go to kind things, I can say that for myself, to ensure that what I am reporting is not what intelligence officer told me. To ensure that what I want to report is not what my commander just wants, just for him to get glamour and glory. Because we are growing in the job and our future still lies in the job. I will say that, does our media people, do our media people rather, do they also look at us in this line? Do they observe us? Thank God this is how he observes me. I believe from today others will begin to observe. Do you observe what we are doing in our own right for our nation? Before you now think of what to report, or before you report in your own way, or before you report because the economy is down, or because you report, or before you report rather, because maybe uh, uh, um, you cannot live up to your own expectation, and you feel the only way I can get to this people is to get to this agency. How do you report us? Security reporting has a lot of definitions. It's speech making, we don't want to go there. It's about metrics, it's about mannerism. What are the metrics of your communication? Metrics have to do with dynamism. How complex do you think? Today we are fighting a complex insecurity in a complex society. How many media men have understood that? In line with international relations, in line with power and strategy, in line with international defense strategy, in line with international war, in line with international power and politics. How many of us have trained or invested in ourselves to that extent to understand that? That brings me back to the word called C, caution. You must take caution when you want to report security. I will stand on my topic because the security reporting. You must take caution. Haven't given us the background of the environment we find ourselves and why we chose this job to serve this nation selflessly. And that's the way you can judge us if we do not. How many of us are cautious enough to think twice before you report that this was civil defense that shot the unharmed man that was a civilian. Did you do your investigative journalism to know what transpired? Was it civil defense that shot? Or when they were having an altercation, somebody shot that person from the behind because he recognized the person that that was my enemy that I've been looking for to kill. And because you found civil defense there and you did your your you use your phone. And you can have that civil defense figurine or image and you put it on Facebook or social media and the thing is trending and it becomes a trafficking for you and everybody is on your website and you want to make money from reporting such story. You and I know in this business that bad news does what? I can't get that. Bad news does what? Sales. And good news does what? Sleep. But you know after all these things that we learned, you are still going to make your, your maker and now tell God that all true my professionalism is all bad news that was reported, not good news. Right. Because the status of the bad news that you reported would also be judged in heaven. Whether you reported bad news that was really a bad news, or you turned good news to a bad news. Caution. Objectivity is also important. A security report. You can use another synonymous word as the same thing to be factual. The opposite of objectivity is subjectivity. You must look more on a common front than on a singular front. You must be more interested on the common interest than a singular interest. You, you must think of collective, complex interest than just you. A lot of, a lot of us want glamour and glory. I tell people who envy me today for whatever reason. That you see me on paper, you see me on TV, you see me on radio. I was not on that radio, TV, and paper for plenty years. 
you are just sending me now. Something should, you should ask yourself a question. Why are they seeing this guy now and they are singing well? It means I have been putting up a work sacrificially somewhere. And now that I appear, I have to appear well. You must be objective in your writing. Don't go for the glamour and glory. When 10, 15, 20 people, which it will start from one person, start talking about you all over the all over the Lagos State up to Nigeria, and you start having in the diaspora people saying, I used to know one guy, I used to know one link, I used to know one uh, 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 journalist, I, wherever you are hiding, I am telling you, you will soon be in the limelight. Not only by people giving you awards, though in one year I became the award uh, popular jingle in my organization. I got eight awards in one year. I'm sure they knew what they were seeing before they are calling me for award, and I never paid for one. National interest. As J. Morgantau, one of the foremost contemporary scholars of international relations, make us to understand that it is the interest of a nation as a whole. The whole interest of this nation is to ensure that Nigeria remains in peace and security in tranquility and in safety. Not the way my fellow youths came out during enters. You know, I, used to, I have to say my fellow youths. Those my fellow youths that came out during enters, they had a common goal. They had a good call. They knew what they were doing. But they lacked some things that we knew when some of us were doing unionism for six years in last year, before we started wearing this uniform. And I must tell you, Whatever you think you want to do, and whatever you think you want to achieve, right for our nation, that you feel the government is doing wrong, and you think the security agencies are also not doing well, because we are doing right, but we not do well every time. Please, still remember that if Nigeria bombs, you cannot sit here. Now speak and not hold these events. God forbid that many of us may be sweeping in Togo or the Republic of Benin. So after everything, all your meetings that you do about how to do a story about this election, whether it's to hold or to not hold, how to do a story of what the army wants to do or what the defense wants to do, let's see the ones that we can't make battles for, for them. Think about Nigeria. Think about the nation. Think about Nigeria. If this nation bonds, where will I be? You might be single. If for adventure, God forbid, that singular person dies. You know, you and your soul will meet God. Think about your wife. I used to tell you, you love her. Anytime you want to leave the house. Think about those children that will become the children of somebody else. And you will not take care of them very well. At the end of the day, I'd like us to note that what we need more is collaboration. What we need more is cooperation. On the final note, i like to use a scenario. For one year of big PRO, all I have received is award, award, award. These are emphatic statements. My statements are not about the award. To lay uh, the matter straight. But if you are PRO and you have never written during crisis, and you have never faced any crisis, your PRO is not yet a complete PRO. Somebody just came out from the blues and began to write about civil defense and police around the Yanodo based on, anti, uh, based on pipeline vandalism. And the guy was just writing and he did a very long narrative for those of us that study English and literature. Very long one. At the end of the day, he was able to dance the image of the Nigerian police force very well, you know, unprofessionally. He tried to dance the image of civil defense, even with total evidence. He tried to dance the image of civil defense. It was very hard for him to do. But he made it in his statement. He implied it. At the end of the day, he achieved his aim. And he called it investigative journalism. I was just coming from the, from, from the house, going to the office. And for that got to know through somebody, you know, in the, in the job, everybody's a PRO. And he just called me, show me are you. I said, I'm on my way. He said, you better be on your way. There's fire on the mountain. Punch has finished us. I said, no problem. When I come, sir. I got to the office, and he said, have I seen the story? 
and I looked at the story. I said, oh, this one is not um, a story that you can, you know, they call it missing for. He said, what do you mean? Everything about you is you cannot call story. I said, oh, guy, it's not something you can call story for. I mean, call missing for. He said, so what do you mean how to? I said, so this intelligence said we should write to rejoin that. I said, oh, God, I think you think and you know that I'm a professional in this thing. He said, yes. And so you, you should, I, I felt you should ask me what do we do. Let me express myself before you now subject me to what that. And I said, okay, what do we do? And I said, sir, I like to subject this story to education. I studied the story. I came back and said, sir, there was no need for a rejoinder. This story is dead. Why? There were no practical investigating journalism. And in the story, the CP was contacted. He gave his word. The commandant was contacted. He gave his word. The PRO was contacted, and I gave my word. And those words to perceive all of these things that are not founded. And there are no evidences for all of these things. So, let this thing go third light. And that was how that thing quelled. There was no issue. There was no action. So, I'd like to say on the final note that I also congratulate NASPI once again. And I forge, I mean, and task um, NASPI and other media practitioners that I hear that this is another opportunity for us to collaborate more, cooperate more for the greater good of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shil uh, I know, as many of us have known uh, Shil very well, you know that he did not support, did he? Did he disappoint? Did he disappoint? Or he did not disappoint? Except you don't know him, he didn't disappoint. So what more I trust for? Have you seen? Shona Bodan, please. Thank you very much. Uh, if you understand with me that uh, you made very salient points about the potash, you can observe, you can be conscious, you can go into other parts. There's so many things that you for you to do a reporting. And you went through it to have made all those points. Thank you very much, Mr. Fiorano, for having us to see you. We appreciate it. And I have quite a, thanks to Mr. Samson, I have a number of clients who are journalists. And um, my experience with them is what makes me appreciate our speakers today even more. The thing is, um, if you want to have your high rated website, there is a lot to do with you, and it is not enough for us to talk about today. But I would just want to leverage on what has been spoken already today and use that to emphasize that what has been said to, today is enough to make a high rate of represent. But I want to add some more um, notes to it. Now, you see, if you're going to have a high rate of represent, I know this is a very um, serious concern of journalists because. Journalists, journalists want to um, be recognized, they want to have high traffic on their website, they want to be able to have a voice. But in many cases we see that this is being done in the wrong way. So um, what I want us to what I want to do today, given what I've said before, is I want to just give some ideas. You see, when you're going to if you want to really have a high-rated um, website, let us change our mentality, our approach to how we are running our websites. Yes, the issue of copy and paste, that is just too poor. It's just too poor in practice. And we have to understand something. Our, techni our technology companies like Google, like Microsoft, and all these search engines, these companies that open, provide search engine um, solutions. We need to understand something. They are, they are very smart. And in providing search engine results, they do apply intelligence, artificial intelligence, and a lot of um, things that help to filter the results. So if you want to stand out, you cannot afford to continue to copy and paste. You cannot afford that. You must stand out. You must approach your stories with your own voice, with your own um, uniqueness to it. And you must always be very timely and practical about it. You must not just do what others are doing for the sake of filling up the website with pages. These search engine um, companies will recognize it and they won't give you any uh, reputation, they will just be reducing your reputation. And you will not be blaming your web developer for that. It is you, you that you are running the website. 
you that you are putting content on that website, you are the one that is responsible for your own ranking on search engines. Like um, Mr. Oba said, if, whether you are using plugins, whether you are using the best designed website, if your content is poor, you are going nowhere. And that is what the truth. So, um, um, I think this kind of, given what has been said today, if you put everything together, the issue of um, you being objective in your reporting, you refusing to seek glamour, but you know, telling the truth and doing it in a way that seeks to educate people, in a way that seeks, seeks natural, natural, national interest, in a way that um, you are trying to set an agenda. You know, given the points that I'm making today, if you take your journalism and filter it through these things that have been said, you will stand out. Because even your search engines and um, you know other uh, platforms that seek to you know make you visible, they will see this. If you are going to use so social media as your means of um, boosting your reputation or getting your voice out there, taking these points, you will do better rather than just um, copying this thing and following the crowd. And if you do that, you are just going to be flooded in the crowd with everybody else. You only have to stand up. You, you must stand up. You must apply your voice. You must filter you know, the news, do your investigation, and come out with quality reporting. Otherwise, sorry, there's nothing a technical person you can do. There's nothing no magic you can do about it. And like I said, these platforms, these IT platforms, all these giants, they apply artificial intelligence. They filter things out. And if you don't stand up, Google, you want some, some of us journalists that want um, Google AdSense on our site. These are part of the things that Google checks. If they see copy paste, you are not going to get a Google. They need to see your uniqueness, they need to see that you are not just um, somebody that is just going to give poor quality out. Google is, is particular about quality content. So um, I think uh, these points, you know, let's just um, take this and apply it to our website. Because um, I actually came with a bunch of um, subtopics for today, but I'm going to start approaching them now. I will flood the very time I have. So and they are very technical um, topics as well to deal with. If I start now and give you just this, you may not really get much out of it. So let me just emphasize again. Everything that we said here today, apply it to your website, apply it to your social media, apply it to everything you are doing, and you will stand out. You will eventually reap the benefits of it. So let me just use um, that emphasis to end my session for school. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tini. Now, this is a permit me to stand on the existing protocol. As you all know, we are here to talk, talk about media practitioners. And uh, as you all know, journalism, as we know, is a global profession. And journalists have a duty to use this profession to reinvent Nigeria through positive reportage. That is, there must be a collective effort to deploy in projecting a good image of the country. As the brother has said, from um, SDC, we don't have any other country. It's only Nigeria, it's ours. If there is any commotion or if there is any fight, that is, we have to consume the role by the Republic, Togo, Ghana, Haiti Coast, and the rest of it. Therefore, we must actually learn to assimilate and digest on how we can report how Nigeria can move forward, because we don't have any other country. It is very really important for human existence. There is what we call national security, which must be public, which must come first in every reportage. That is time for every journalist to celebrate Nigeria, and we must practice this kind of journalism, targeting and representing the country, and not just as you all know, we don't have any other country. The journalists, they are so powerful. They have the instrument of coercion. With their pain, they must use this to promote Nigeria. We don't have any other country. If you want to know how good
friends we have are brothers. Go to any other African country, go to Togo, Ghana. You will know how great we are as a country. Therefore, I will pray with the journalists in our country to use their position to see how we can promote the image of this country. Because Nigeria is a great country. Other African countries are waiting for us so that if we take all the capital there, because Nigeria is the generous of Africa, that's why we need us to be able to do the business so that at the end of the day, we all have a sense of the land. Do you think there is do you, sorry, do you think that crimes are not committed in other countries? The difference is that crimes crime that concern national security are shared with security agencies and not made public. That is, in order not to drive away investors in terms of developments or put the impact they put their country first. Sometimes we just write sensational story to sell our, our news or our newspaper. In America, there is crime every day. In fact, the CNN you watch in America, there are two types of CNN. We have CNN for, uh, for the US. And the one you watch in Nigeria here is not CNN you watch in the US. They show you what you want to see. Not the one in America they are showing you. Therefore, because they take their national security first. Therefore, when we are doing our when we are doing our reporting, we must take our national security first because we don't have any other country. This is the area I am trying to tackle so that we will be able to tackle it so that we understand how we must take our country first before any other change. Some causes of insecurity include lack of strong institutions. We agree, yes. We don't, there is no way, you see, in Nigeria, we don't have a good institution, we are free. The constitution is not well defined, I agree. But the truth is, can it be better? The question is, yes. How can we make it better? Those are the agitations the journalists need to ask, those in power. So at the end of the day, we will be able to do better. That is what we did in Nigeria. Criticism is good, but it must be constructive criticism, which will actually draw the attention of those who are empowered to do the right thing. Based on the current constitution, it is not easy for any government since democracy to succeed. They are trying and doing their best to solve the challenges confronting the nation. So I think it is not easy to rule this country. Nigerians, we all have our brain. We all have our share in terms of ruling Nigeria. Because if you find out, you find out that, sorry, if you look at it critically, you feel that the constitution is not well defined. I agree. But can we do better? The answer is yes. If you agree with me, you listen to the voice of Afghan government last uh, month that is trending all over the media, calling for internal government. What is your view? What is your thought? What have you done about it? Do you think, really, if you go for election today, with the present government we have in Nigeria, can we move the next level? The answer is no. So what do we do? So use your pen to be able to formulate an translate good policies of your thoughts. Your instinct into reality. If you don't do the right thing, even you will be part of the problem at the end of the day. One of the things I said here, it's not about giving that word, it's about doing the right thing because we have we are all shareholders in terms of reporting about Nigeria. We don't have any other country. Even in America, go and check the record, or even in Europe. So the journalists who have a very better role to play in this country for us to move to the next level. We don't have any other country. If there is one today, as he said, my colleague, you cannot write. This event will not hold. Rather, everybody will go around this later. We must not allow this heart to fail, which is the only country we have as our dear country.
You look at the issue of education. Journalist media should ask and deem it fit to ask National Assembly, for example, how come those elected in government, for example, those in government, National Assembly, civil servants, those the civil servants, they are not our leaders. How come their children go and want to go and educate themselves or they go to private school? How come they don't go to public school? What does it cost you as a journalist? To, co to push a bill to the National Assembly, to tell the government or the, national, or the president of the series, I said, you know what? Before you can be elected as a, as a, as a uh, before you can buy for any position or be appointed, your children, your sibling, should be able to go to public school in Nigeria instead of them flying abroad. That is why we have a lot of casting strike in Nigeria today. They don't care about it. You agree with me? It would be private area when the government was like last week, but it was quickly resolved because the house will never, as a matter of the house, we never like to think to go to whatever price. So, what have you done as a journalist to see how you can report that? So that Nigeria, we have and we have not, let me have the pay to participate in Nigeria. These are the two questions. They are national discourse. So at the end of the day, you and I will have a discourse of the money. This is our country, and this country must not fall. This is the purpose of this presentation today. So at the end of the day, wherever you find yourself, as a Nigerian or as a stakeholder, your impact will be felt because you have a very vital role to play as a national. As a, as, a, as, a, as a stakeholder and as a public Nigeria. How to say this? The truth is, what we have in Nigeria today as the document of the Constitution, I believe it was formulated and translated by the um, military. I think it came as well for us to have what we call people to the Constitution. If we do this, you and I will have meetings. At the end of the day, we have a clear document that will make you and I to have a sense of belonging. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Uh, for Pastor's part. Um, actually, I'm not a journalist, nor is what I was. I'm in the security sector department. Thank you very much because I asked 
that here have and that you've to go right now, which I need to be here. So thank you very much. God bless you all.
and have been in the public relations. So it's better you don't allow something to happen than to let it happen then you start thinking of damage control, which you might have done a lot, and I might have done a lot of damages. Now we are all here now, we're learning. Where are the markets, I mean the, the, the paper sellers? Where are they? Sometimes we need to consider these people because they are the end where the back last happen. They feel it most. When you talk of the, 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 the uh, what is it called, the CFURTW, yes, where are they? There are some messages that you pass across to these people that they cannot even digest the chocolate of, you know, traveling on it. I always refer to our family when it comes to journalism. It's what I tell my children that they understand. When the journalists tell the public that, yes, your country is bad. The children that are sick, will, what kind of impression are you giving to them? Like I do tell people, there's no, it's hardly any state in the country that I've not been to due to my profession as in the military. I mean, army. So yeah, it's bad enough. Some people will say, don't go to that Igbo, don't go to that uh, Kowiri. They are terrible, they are bad. When you want to think of tribes, religion, or whatever, don't generalize it. Deal with it individually. I know of a lot of outside men that have done good to me, a lot of people that have done good to me, a lot of your that have done good to me. Say they have done bad to me. So why would you generalize this? So when you are dealing with issue, don't think of religion because we are so hypocrites. Don't think of Christ. Don't generalize issue. So stick on your question. Huh? The facts to me, need the parties. Look for the way to solve the issue. Just like to see two soldiers. I mean, a soldier and a policeman fighting. I have police officers in my family. I have the Air Force, I have Navy. The same thing, other security agencies. Even the so-called, uh, what do you call it, all these are local outfits, uh, security, whatever. I have it. The same thing applies to others. Now you want to take glory, find out your past, you turn an off investigation, I mean investigation journalism, and say, yes, I'm going to corrupt it. It's your country. If it happens, you feel the pain more. It's always the same that uh, you want to war, you want to war. We, the soldiers, we don't want to war because we know what we are past. Then the civilians say you want to war, you want to war. Wait and let the war first. Let us see who we face. We lost. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.
the same. But, but then I want to I want to go back to my senior media. We talked about business of finance. Sir, most of the time in many people always gather from the negative news. You can call that uh, life into Then you can go ahead. For instance, just last week, 
All the national papers goofed. Almost all of them goofed. They slammed the picture of the baby who was still in the captivity of the kidnappers on their front pages. And it is against the ethics of journalism. There's something we call the Illumin Declaration, which is the ethics of the practice of journalism in Nigeria. And the Illumin Declaration is explicit enough. I don't know if all of us here are acquainted with the Illumin Declaration. And that declaration is clear that when you have an underage involved in anything that has to do with crime or violence, you protect their identity. In the process of wanting to break story, in the process of wanting to sell your paper, in the process of wanting to generate traffic, we throw this ethics under the boss. We throw it away. We sacrifice it. And that takes you to your question from time. We think that by pushing out wrong narrative, by painting security operatives in bad picture, you'll be able to generate traffic and be able to make some revenue. No. You may make the revenue now, but on the long run, you will be at a loss. Because the moment your readers know that you are just a conduit of fake news, you are a conduit of poorly investigated stories, you can only fool them sometimes, you can't do it all of the time. You are out to make money, you are not out to, you know, push the interest of the society. You know, you may make your money now, but on the long run, the society, your readers, will come to realize that you are just a convict for fake news, that you are not even a journalist at all, and you end up to lose them, and you won't even make your revenue at the end of the day. So, um, the quest to make money should not override our responsibility as responsible members of the society in the discharge of our duties. If you listen to my presentation, it was intentional that I played the art before the business. And you realize that I restricted myself to the business of generating clean traffic for the website. For people who have followed me, for people who know me very well, I, I, I don't go back and say the truth. Whatever appears to tell the truth. And also I was able to point out the other time that you see newspapers doing governors of the year award. That's not our business. That is not our job. We are not an award giving organization. But some of our senior colleagues have entrenched themselves in it. The national newspapers. This one will come and say they are doing uh, a man of the year award. And they are doing man of the year award. You can't see that street cleaner who found the bag of money and returned to the owner. And your award is going to that governor who has siphoned for me for. And sadly, those of us who are online too, we are beginning to go in that direction. We are beginning to go in that direction because of 20,000, 10,000 naira miserable money. That can never buy you data for one week. I did a short piece on Monday or so, and I syndicated it on some of the journalists' platform. Now, the politicians are buying for 100 million naira. They will get printers to print their posters, they will pay them fully. The boys that will print their, their vests for them, they will pay them fully. The women that will come to sing as rally, they will pay them well. The journalists will come, right in your presence, they will pack in money in their clothes, big their clothes, give to area boys in your presence, they will pay them well. And when you are going, they will give you this little 20,000, 10,000 naira. And you go, and then you start thinking they are crazy to high levels. Shame on us. And that is where the problem of fake news and poorly researched stories come in. And that is the bitterness of this gentleman here. That when matters of security issues arise, instead of us to be patient, maybe because we are trying to serve certain interests, or we are trying to do something, I'm not telling the media, I'm not saying those things. When you see an erring police officer, you are free to report him. Call him out. And that is our job, it's part of our job. To look at the society and you know, point out what is wrong. They are not public relations practitioners. They are journalists. But there are some issues that you want to apply caution in pushing them out. It's high time we start working shoulders high 
as journalists. Yes, sir. Everybody talks to us anyhow. You go online, everybody is a journalist online. You go to WhatsApp, everybody is a journalist teacher on WhatsApp. They teach you how to do your job. And we are there sitting down, collecting 10,000 and 15,000. Jesus Christ. Thank you, very much. Please, I, I'm taking notes. We're not going to get freedom that we can engage you. Please, just I'm taking notes. Thank you. Please, what is happening now? I just want you to, in the GP, you're not sure. Help us to put the perspective, the difference between national interest. Thank you very much. I think the brother is there. I really thank you for your for your submission. And uh, as I said earlier on, national security can never can not be provided as We don't have any other country. This is our country. As you know, you know, I was trying to protest for other for them. When I was talking about community policy, for example, we are all stakeholders in Nigeria to be able to report what we see in case of meeting any of the security agencies, for example. It is your duty, not even as a journalist, but as a matter of your own patriotism. When you see anything going on in Nigeria, you can walk into any other security agencies and report either in the military, in the civil defense, in the police, or even in the army. It is your right, not your privilege. The other one is, let me even ask you a question, or a rhetoric question, tell us. Election is coming. We are trying to vote the best evidence. Have you ever asked a rhetoric question and asked yourself, how come the hospital you use as a journalist? For instance, we use the same hospital. They are children don't use public hospitals. They use private hospitals. They go abroad. What are we going to do to inculcate, maybe by law or in the constitution, so that the next coming government will be able to implement it? What can we do? Use your pen to be able to ask those fundamental questions, which is really critical for human existence. If you don't do this, the truth is. Even though we do different elections in Nigeria, we continue to complain. You and I, we never have a sense of belonging in our dear country. We will be growing in cycles. Let me ask you another question. Since the UK votes that is big me to the government, what are they using to do? In abroad, when the crime is committed in London, in America, you see the mayor of mayor of New York coming on board. Do you know the local government chairman in the authority? Have you ever seen them to respond to security challenges in their vicinity? The answer is no. We don't even know them. what is their role. Do you know the people who are going to work to talk about security in the constituency? No. Have you ever seen House of Rep, House of Assembly, talking about security, about what happened in his own constituency, in his own division? The answer is no. What are you doing with your name to ask those vital questions? Let me even ask you last week. Last week, there was a bill that was passed by, by the Senate concerning kidnapping that if you pay ransom, you will be arrested, you will be sacrificed. Just imagine my brother. I have never read about the general what they have done about it. That is one of the greatest insults to Nigerians. Let me even tell you this, my brother. I was a victim of kidnapping six years ago when I was going to Benin. I was kidnapped by the enjoy you. The job boys. I spent four nights inside the bush. What you are telling me, if my family, with their good will to go and rescue me from the bush, you go and arrest them. You cannot arrest the DPO, you cannot arrest the assembly, they will be CP and the government in that state. So you want to go and arrest the, the, my people who helped me out of the number. That, that law was lost now. I think the journalists must take the plan to write the National Assembly that that law need to be reversed as a matter of urgency. As far as they cannot do the job, the commissioner of that state should be arrested. The deep people of that organization should be arrested. The house of bread should be arrested. I don't know how many should be arrested. If we don't arrest them, we should not arrest my parents or my brother who go out of their way to regret me from the shadow of the family. Let me even tell you, my brother, I don't wish my enemy to be kidnapped. 
Kidnapping is like death sentence. Until, until you are out of it, you are not out of it. This is what I want more to turn on this to do as a lover of urgency. If you agree with me, my brother, I'm sorry, sir. The truth is, people are calling for state police. I don't believe in state police. I believe in local police because crime is local. Because every crime is committed in every community in Nigeria. Right. So the money given to the state government to be channeled to local governments. So that the local government will be able to use the money to finance what they have. The police cannot do their work. The army cannot do their job. What are we doing to ensure that what they need is given to them? If they are prominent today, that is the end. They will not there is no vote for them. So what can we do to protect their image? They are not from the moon for Christ's sake. What can we do to protect our people who are in the front line to protect our life? So your question, sir, in conclusion, the national security, it is very, very critical for human existence. As I said earlier on, the CNN you watch in Nigeria is not the same CNN you watch in America. People are making everything in America, but you can never see it being reported by the CNN. But the only thing you want to watch will hear. So at the end of the day, let us not begin to destroy Nigeria image. We don't have any other country. This is the country we have. I love my country, that is why I am here to do. I guess we do the same thing, that is why we are here. So please, let us do the right thing so that at the end of the day, we make our country the better country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, we want to get the audience now to speak, go back to you. And uh, my brother, just introduce yourself and take your social media. Good afternoon, my brother. My name is Abdul Hamid. I have a long time following this inside this regular newspaper. But now I want my master media. The question I want to ask you, uh, oh sorry, before I ask my question, I want to appreciate you for calling. We appreciate you, God bless you. And God should continue to deal with you in all your endeavors. The media and the security agency in Nigeria. I have been a victim of you know, various uh, uniform men in Nigeria, both Nigeria, Nigerian police, and whatever, whatever name you can mention as a media person. But the question I want to ask first is why is it that when a media person is carrying out his activity? At the point where we have issues of security, security, our uniformed men tend to be violent against the media. I am asking this question because I know I won't, I'm not the only victim. There are a lot of people here that are victims of what I want to ask. You know, if you see an issue going on in a particular place, maybe a police officer, an FRS person, and a soldier or you, different security personnel. Having the issue presently, something is going on. And you see someone that works for a particular media organization trying to do his or her own duty. You are doing your job, he or she is doing her job. At that point, I don't think there is an issue whereby the person will have to cross the other side to go and tell whoever is involved. In and the media person, I want to do my job. At that point, by the time the person is doing his or her own job, you will see that one of the officers, they will later leave. The person that even when they are doing, they might be doing their job, that the person is also trying to do his own work as a media person to assist them. You understand? By the end of the day, the, the embarrassment will be talked to two. The officers will tend to embarrass whoever they, they are handling, doing their right, you know, the right job that they are doing. They will still come back home and embarrass the media person doing his own job too. Why is it that so? That's number one. Number two, in Nigeria. When we have issues that have to do with um, maybe something bad happens, we say we, there should always be a way the media should report it. My own kind of philosophy, before I study, before I study mass communication, I believe that when things that is wrong, when bad things happen, I'm not saying we should exercise about it or we should say something that is wrong. But sometimes when you let people know that something has happened, and it's bad. Apart from the fact that we have to go for the job well, uh, 90% of the country and 10% talking about it, when you talk about something bad, people tend to change. 
how do we media what this narrative with the issue of not targeting the image of our country? Thank you very much. I believe we've got a question. Why are the security men always after the money when they get a job? And why do you not want them to reform the party when the public wants to hear what they have? Please, can you give my brother this uh, a baller that he gives? Thank you. Um, thank you for being brave enough to criticize uniform organizations. And it's a workshop. It should be applauded and that's because the workshop means when you express your mind and you express your mind without fear of evil so that solutions can be given. However, I thank you for not mentioning civil defense. Part of the uniform agency that gave you to become a victim. And that's part of my job as well. Um, I must say that we also lay on the table here that during the exercise uh, crisis where um, some Jews in my area blocked the way for me not to be able to go to the office because you know, during the exercise period, um, uniform men was close to the office. We are essential commodities, like the phrase that was running during the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, something happened. I joined them, I took my uniform back home, I joined them to protest in favor of the demands that they were demanding in our favor. I want to believe you still remember. They were not against the uniform agencies, they were against the system that makes uniform agencies to become reactive, to become brutal according to the way they see it. And the government goes in subjecting their demands into five demands that they will respond to. While I joined in that um, process, when there was no one to go to anymore, I joined to now begin to educate them based on my experience from school as a unionist. I began to tell them about the interest of Nigeria. I began to tell them about national security. I began to tell them about the safety of their life. At the end of the day, now look at the other part of it. The same people who are clamoring for these goods for Nigeria, according to them, we are also influenced by some people that are unseen. Yes or yes. Somebody was driving to pass some crop of Jews that were blocking the way. Called and of course they are protesting. And she had in her car a younger sister who was dying. Maybe that was why God allowed them to drop my way from going to the office so that I can save that girl. These same youths with good intention blocked that lady and told her if she did not come down with those that are inside her car who they feel they are mature, they will not allow her to pass. So the thing almost first crackers, and I came into this thing, what happened? The young poor girl was crying. The lady the, the that was driving was also shouting that she saw this kind of juice. And at the end of the day, I said, Cross, I said, let me attend to her. I asked her, I saw that this lady was the thing. I want to talk to these guys. Cross, this is my handicap. This is where I walk. But because people are across the way, no traffic was everywhere. And there's no reason for anybody to check all the way from other ways to grab the house. And I told them, if this is this singular one you guys will do for me, I will know that sincerely you are really fighting a just cause. These people will not come down. Somebody is dying. Let's arm pass and take us to your space. So the glory of God, that was how during the essence I was able to save a life. Now, how do you become victims? You become victims by failing from the area of observation. When you are going to report anywhere the journalists, observe the environment. As PROs, as security men and I mean officers and men, there are places that we go to, they are not designated for our ranks or government grades. There are conferences, there are programs that are held, security programs that are held. 
some of our seniors who can't go in, children of course our way in. The moment you want to force your way in into an environment without concerning, or you want to break protocols, believing that you are a journalist, you must enter anywhere, you might be a victim. Another one is common, sorry, because it's education that we have here. You get to a place, you see that something is happening, you bring out your phone. Mr. Man, you did not tell us what you did that made you to become a victim. You bring out your phone unruly, unprofessionally. Your life there is not in good life. Even with them, don't allow people to phone them. For example, you have a case of if you If you pass, I did it very well. Where you have the line. You know, on that line, that real line, a lot of people like to do, I mean, do their transportation by staying on the, on the train and to get to any very good. Do you know the circumvent the country by not paying those that are supposed to pay at the train station? Now, you will not call yourself a journalist just to do it. So, the child is one day that they bring out your phone and say you want to do it. Now, school will kill that person. <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I communicating? It's not about this one. It's about letting us know some of this. Okay, sorry. The last, the last, I think it's okay. Okay, thank you. I think it's okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
As if the situation where the security president was man, angry, that he was angry somebody anyhow, never knew that somewhere in another state, the same thing is happening to his PID in the uh, uh, So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Major. Thank you, my kind of uh, Please, I will take every other question. Every other question will bring you take it together.
based on SP or the recognition of your exemplary public service, demonstration of excellence in media and relations. This day, level of May 2022. Turn it, turn it to her. President, hold it, hold it, hold it. Thank you.